dynasty. A feat so rare in modern sports, it can be hard to recognize, even when one so clearly arises. Blanco broke back, coming in, and he makes the sliding catch, and that's the ball game. So the Giants, knowing that they had won a wild card spot, they get to celebrate with a win. No speeches, you guys have earned this, celebrate, enjoy this. The 2014 Giants were an indestructible force to start the season. A game winning homer. Dominating the National League with the best record in baseball. Posey hammers one, and the Giants take the lead. But by midseason, the rival Dodgers had taken over the NL West, and the Giants were left struggling to keep pace. This season was one of the most difficult I was ever a part of. You know, when I got over, things were in a little bit of a funk. And we just really needed to be a team. We got beat up, we got knocked down, we got hurt, we got injured. And you saw us, we just kept fighting. We knew we had the team that if we get in the playoffs, that we could do good things. We don't need no easy runs. We get to play an extra game. It doesn't matter how you get from A to B. And guess what, boys? We're going to the dance. Yeah! Uh, everybody in this room will be eager to try and get a playoff series back here in front of these fans. Uh, they, they deserve it. They definitely do. Right now, we're not guaranteed another game here at home. We got to go earn that. It's a part of the journey. Do you guys want to see another game here at home? Yes! 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 One more time, fellas. Yes! 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 Looking forward to seeing you. Thank you. With a season on the line, the Giants traveled to the Steel City, where the streaking pirates and a sea of black awaited them. You know, the mindset going into that game in Pittsburgh, it was game seven, right out of the, right out of the gate. That wild card situation is pretty crazy. The intensity level is definitely high. You know, they're going to be a formidable opponent tonight. They're not going to come limping in. This is a very hostile environment. So loud, you can hardly hear yourself think. We knew it was a tough atmosphere. I think a lot of us watched the game last year when the Pirates were in that wild card game. It was truly an intimidating crowd. And that place was rocking. If you're out there worried about the, the place being loud and not worrying about getting guys out, then you're going to be in trouble. Let's be in the wall, right there. Nobody believe that, but we believe. That's it. Are you feeling? Okay. What a scene here, and just a few minutes away from first pitch time. And I think everybody sort of figured that was going to be a huge advantage for them. And then Bumgarner comes out and immediately at the start of the game establishes, uh-uh, this is going to be a little different than last year was. The pitch, a curveball in the dirt, struck him out swinging, and that's a strong first inning for Bumgarner. That night, it was up there. He was as crisp as he was the whole playoffs. Now he throws. That's in there with a fastball. Strike three call. Bumgarner with another one, two, three inning. And Bumgarner's poise, his ability to just quiet everything down, let the Giants settle in. In the number four from PNC Park in Pittsburgh, no score. And a ball lined toward right center field. That's a base hit. High ball for it. Bell has drawn a walk to load the bases. Well, what an opportunity for the Giants here. When you get the bases loaded and him have two strikes, so I just remember how calm he was. So I'm just trying to put the ball in play and got a hold of it a little a little better than you know I, I was even trying to. And, and Crawford hits a high fly ball right field. Snyder going back. It's gone! Giants have taken a 4-0 lead and totally silenced this crowd in Pittsburgh. Like, holy cow, like, this is a huge blow for this game. Game over, you know. You got bum guarding on the hill, so that's it. As he deals. And it's strike three call on the inside corner. Talk about stomach punch at 42,000 people. Oh, my word. And now Madison Bumgarner trying to finish off what he started here. Swing and a pop-up. Near home plate. Buster Posey tosses the mask away. Foul ground. He makes the catch. And the Giants are heading for Washington, D.C. Yes! Yeah! Yes! Will we be at home this year again? Yes! 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 
Another Giants October run starts like today to take on the National League's best team, the 96 win Washington Nationals. Let's do hot buttered rums, yeah. scorching hot bluegrass, live in studio. Giants fight song. The SF Giants are in DC after sinking that pirate ship. It's time to show this country how this team will never quit. This city's got some soul. This city's got some pride. Don't you ever give up on the Giants and hang on for the ride. Say hey, hey, about the kids. On paper, the Giants did not look like they matched up very well with Washington. Go Giants! The Nationals have the most star-studded roster in the game, and they've got the starting rotation that looks very, very intimidating. Despite two world titles in the last four years, the Giants were once again predicted to lose another playoff series. It is funny how that always seems to happen. I don't know how many World Series titles we have to win, I guess, for that to change, but uh, we, we always seem to play better that way. Leading the charge in Game 1 was gritty veteran Jake Peavy, a key acquisition made by General Manager Brian Sabian at the trade deadline. Anytime you know you're going to be on the move and you're going to get traded, you want to go places to where you know that they're serious about winning a championship because this is all I'm trying to do. When Peavy came over, he brought the leadership, the intensity, the passion. I still credit Peavy to not necessarily saving the season, but dude, without him, well, they know. wouldn't be here. As a teammate, you appreciate a guy that's willing to lay it all out on the line to win a baseball game for you. Peavy ready. The pitch. He struck him out swinging. The 2-2 two two pitch. Struck him out swinging. And he blew it right by he set the tone for us there uh, in Washington. And it also reaffirmed the belief in each other and, and ourselves that, hey, we can do this. And Panic gets a line drive up the middle of base hit. It is coming in to score is Ishikawa, and the Giants lead one to nothing. The look to second, the pitch to Bell. Bell hits a line drive to right field, a base hit. They're going to wave in pin. Worth has got a good arm. His throw is not in time. Pin scores, it's two nothing Giants. Swing the batter to second. To his right goes Panic. He's got it. The second one. Crawford with a one hop throw to first. Double play. If they're going to win it, it will have to be by one here in the ninth. Casilla will come in. Ground ball to second. High hop. Panic's got it. And he throws him out at first. And game one goes to the Giants. It told those, those guys in that other locker room, those fans in Washington, that you know what? You know, on paper, you may look a lot sexier than we do. But you know, we're here to play baseball and we're here to win. My favorite memory from the 2014 postseason run? My favorite memory, I think, was the 18-inning Washington game. Here at Nationals Parks, we get ready for the Giants and the Nationals. And I knew that I was going to have my work cut out for me because I knew that runs were going to be a premium in that game. There wasn't going to be a lot of runs scored. Hudson's 1-2 pitch, strike three, call. On to the third, Giants nothing, Nationals nothing. The way Jordan Zimmerman was pitching, he was so dominant, the game seemed over. Swing and a miss, he struck it out. Zimmerman has retired 17 consecutive Giants. Giants down to their final out, nobody on base, down by a run. Game's over, right? Over. Two down, nobody on. Here is Joe Panic. He's a guy that uh, has a calmness about him. He, he reminds me of Buster Posey. Panic plays this game like he's been at the big league level for 10 years. Very good uh, discipline at the plate. Three one pitch. Outside and he has walked. And here comes Matt Williams. Williams takes the ball from him. Takes him around the game. That may be a good thing. One of our big strengths. We never feel like we're out of it. And Boach throws it's the word resilient out there a lot. Posey stands in the pitch. Swing a line drive left center field. That's going to fall base hit. You know every time Pablo comes up to the plate, especially in the postseason, something crazy is going to happen. And here's the pitch. Pablo swing. Line drive down the left field line. It's a fair ball! Panic in the score, panic! Here comes Posey, thrown to the plate, he slides, he's out! We're going to go to extra innings, the 10th inning. It's the Giants one, the Nationals one. The job that our, our whole pitching staff did was incredible. The bullpen has been outstanding, to say the least. And it's strike three call, take that. And now, Cabrera's thrown out of the game. 
the one that you point to the most is obviously Petit because he pitched six innings where one mistake and the game's over. Swing and a miss. He struck him out and the inning is over. Merrill Petit has uh, helped keep the Giants in this game. The quiet assassin. You know, he's not a man of many words. That's why he was the unsung hero. You didn't even realize how good he was because he just did it so quickly. Petit throws. Swing and a miss. He got him. How about the 16th? You ready? I'm in. Let's go. You're in 15th, 16th inning. It's starting to get kind of cold there. You have a lot invested in that game. A lot of energy, a lot of emotion. And we're going to the 18th inning. See the resiliency and through an amazing on the road pressure cooker. Roark is throwing now to Brandon Belt. Belt is hitless tonight. For either team to, to lose that game, it would have been absolutely devastating. Here's the payoff pitch to Belt. Belt, it's a high fly ball to right. Yeah! Yeah! It is out of here! Makes the catch, and that's the ball game. It equals the longest game ever played in the history of postseason baseball. Yeah. Way to go, boys! Way to go! Yeah, that's it, Bill. That's it. Game four between your San Francisco Giants and the Washington Nationals. Giants failed to sweep yesterday afternoon, but they can still clinch an NLCS berth in front of the home crowd. Heart. Perseverance. Fearlessness. Characteristics of Ryan Vogelsong that embody what the 2014 Giants are all about. This time of year, there's no such thing as being tired and play as hard as you can for, for your teammates. Strike three, ball, the fastball, got it. But he is pumped, he's got command of it. And he somehow raises his, his level of play to the point where you know what, this guy's he's pitching like a number one. Here comes from Vogelsong. And a fastball struck him out swinging. I think guys step up and, and do the things that, they, that we're capable of doing in the playoffs because it's all of us together. Kemp's moving back, still moving back. He's at the wall. He leaps and he makes the catch. That's one of the best plays we've ever seen in right field. I just love this time of year. You, you got to love the playoffs. You got to love the atmosphere here in this ballpark. They, they bring it for us every night. <laughs> The big thing that our fan base brings is the enthusiasm, the passion. It's a driving force within within me and I think a lot of us. You know, we want to make them proud. We want to make them happy. The 2-1. And it's in the dirt. It skips by the catcher to the backstop. Here comes Panic. He scores! And the Giants have gone ahead on a wild pitch. Three outs to go to advance to the NLCS. Santiago Casilla trying to get the save here. Panic's got it. Straightens up and throws it out at first. The Giants have won the division series and let the celebration begin. <laughs> Giants. Cardinals. The only two organizations to represent the National League in the past four World Series. Two really great historic organizations. They are kind of like a mirror image of each other. It's a great rivalry. It's a great rivalry to play in. Outside! It's, it'll be blood baseball. It'll be every bit as intense as the Dodger-Giant rivalry. They've evolved into the teams that you have to go through in order to win the National League pennant. A spot in the World Series on the line. Well, we had the right guy uh, starting that series. Obviously, you know it's going to be a big pitching matchup with Wayne Rock. Here, we're facing a tough pitcher, and you need someone to match up with him, and you couldn't have a better guy. 0 oh, 2 pitch. Fastball, strike three call. You know, he set the tone in that game, and. Uh, you know, we got off to a great start because of Madison. And the Giants have the bases loaded. Travis Ishikawa now to try and get somebody home here. Off the fist, a bloop into shallow left field. Falling, falling, it's in there. Woo! And it is one to nothing Giants. Swing, a shot to third, off the glove. 
a back carpenter, and it rolls beyond him. And it is 2 0 Giants. You got to be on your game. You can't make mistakes, especially, you know, when you're, when you're going up against him and you got the Cardinals lineup. 2 2 pitch. Adam strikes out swinging. Another nasty curve from Bumgarner, his fifth strikeout already. I can't imagine how he feels after throwing over 200 innings in the regular season and then coming out. The dominance that he had this entire postseason was amazing. Two on and two out. Bumgarner pitches. And Cruz strikes out swinging on a fastball. Bumgarner just blew him away. What a pitch. The Giants have taken game one. Madison Bumgarner has had 26 and two-thirds consecutive shutout innings in the postseason on the road. And that is a major league record. I think we deal with adversity uh, probably better than most teams because we've been in such pressure cooker situations. We got walked off, but you can sit and sulk on the past or you can look forward and figure out what you're going to do better next time. Sergio From San Francisco, Giants fans now getting ready for the start of game three. Let's go Giants! You can do it! Two on, two out, no score. And swings and lines one down the right field line. Has given the Giants a one nothing lead. Yeah. Swing and a high drive deep into right field. It's off the wall. One run scores. Penn scores. And they all score. A three run double for Travis Ishikawa. And here's a swing and a shot deep down the left field line, hooking toward the foul pole and off the foul pole. And Randall Gretchik has gone deep to tie the game. So we are going to go into extra innings here in game three. So we're going to line drive, base hit left field. Crawford moves to second. It is another punt situation for Gregor Blanco, who's a very good punter. It wasn't easy. Lefty on lefty, ball in the ball the, the other way. And the pitch, and Blanco bunts it, and it's a good punt. Stone has it. He will wing it down the right field line. Here comes Crawford, and this game. thought we'd seen all the crazy ways to score, but turned out we hadn't seen anything yet. I'm not crazy about the winning ugly term um, because, I mean, we're, we're fighting. This perception that the Giants are lucky, <laughs> I don't even really know what to say other than... I almost feel like saying just like, let them worry about that, right, Cap? I mean, because the Giants are winning games. Cardinals four, Giants one. We're in the third. Scoring those runs are a result of of those tough at bats. Three and two, and the pitch to Posey. Swinging a line drive, base hit left field. Arias comes in to score. It's four to two. They needed that. When it gets to the postseason, you know we don't we don't take a single pitch off. And pins it to ground ball up the middle of base hit. Here comes Buster Posey. Posey scores. It's four to three. And here come the Giants. You see like this one moment, but it was kind of brought about by a lot of other little things that happened. And he bunts it. Duffy on one pitch gets the job done. There's a lot of pressure on the other team to, to make a great pitch or make a great play. Swinging a bouncing ball. Adams has got it. He's going to come home. Not a tie! His Perez beats the throw, and this game is tied. I mean, anybody can win by getting base hits and hitting homers. You know, you win by some of the some of the ways that we've done it during the playoffs. I mean, that's what's hard. Panic, a bouncing ball, stepping on the bag as Adams to throw is wide, coming in to score is proper. And the Giants take the lead. You don't win this many times and you're lucky. Strike three call to the outside corner. The ball game is over. And the Giants have a commanding three games to one lead in the league championship series. A chance to win it and win the pennant right here at home tomorrow night. We want the Royals. We want the Royals. We want the Royals. Game number five tonight in San Francisco. It is the Giants trying to close out the Cardinals. Behind Madison Bumgarner, a chance to stamp their ticket to the World Series for the third time in the last five years. Lots of orange. Sellout crowd, and the Giants are hoping for good things tonight. He swings and lines one, caught by Pablo at third, over to second, double play! Boom, see you later. 
And it gets a high drive to right. Down the line. It is over here! And the kid from AA gives the Giants the lead. It's 2-1. The Cardinals with a new pitcher, Pat Neshack, is the Cardinals' lead here in the bottom of the eighth inning, three to two. Is Michael Morris due to hit? He was disappointed he wasn't on that first series against Washington. Was was excited to contribute. Morris basically missed the last month of the season. The guy that they brought in, Pat Neshack, watching him all year, unhittable. He has this like just powerful presence, and you're just like you believe he can do it. Nishak's one-one pitch. Swing, and there's a high drive down the left field line, hooking toward the corner. Goodbye! It's tied up, and pandemonium reigns at AT&T Park. We'd had Michael hit the homer. And then we had some good at-bats to get Ishikawa into this spot. Belt drew the walk to make it first and second. A base hit could win this game for the Giants. What a moment for Travis Ishikawa, who was this close to calling it quits in the offseason. I give him all the credit in the world to stay with his profession. To watch him wait for his moment, get thrust into a starting role. All the hard work he's put in through this journey of trying to be a major league athlete. I remember right before the bat started, I was feeling a calmness. It was, it was a weird, eerie calmness. Now the scratch. Here it comes. Swing, there's a drive! And I distinctively remember hearing the crowd get louder. Like, is this ball going to go out? Oh my gosh, if this ball goes out, this is going to be awesome. Deep into right field, way back there! Goodbye! The home run for the game and for the pennant! like panicking. I'm like, no, he hit it over the fence. Like, let him run the bases. And I didn't know it was Jake at the time. I just remember it was somebody. And then you see PB, he doesn't know what to do, so he just starts running the bases with him. You know, it's just like some of the funniest stuff. And really just a beautiful moment. I'm pretty sure I'll, I'll be cherishing watching that over and over again. The Giants have made the decision for me that I'm gonna continue with baseball and uh, hold off on the, the, the retirement issue. For the third time in five years, the Giants would represent the National League in the Fall Classic, <laughs> facing a wild card Royals team that had won all eight of their postseason games. Good to see you, man. Congratulations. The biggest stage was now set. Destiny versus Dynasty. Going into the World Series, you know what kind of team you're playing. You know, you don't get to that point without both teams uh, being really good and really talented. It's been 29 years, so, you know, they've felt like they've earned this one. I know I was rooting for the Royals to get there just because of the way they played. They didn't have the best team in baseball, but they got passion for the game and wanted to win, same as us. I think the Giants have this way of making themselves, convincing themselves that they're the team of destiny, but I think all of us knew the Royals were feeling that way too. They were the underdogs. They're never going to get here. They're never going to get this. And they proved everybody wrong. It's like we were watching a, a mirror image, a carbon copy of what we've done, and I think that's what made this matchup so great. I have never anticipated watching a World Series as much as this one. I knew they were good, but I believe in our guys. I know how good we are. With the Giants, I sum them up in three words, confident and calm. I also take it like enjoying it as much as I can, the obstacle. You know, you have to beat the best to be the best. So I figure this is going to go seven. We want to play the most difficult team. We want the competition to get as intense as it can, and, and, and we love that. Give me a hard one. Give me a good slap. Oh, that's not sweet. Oh, I can't go no harder than that. I love you too much. With the storylines drawn, the speculation set, 
The Giants, again underdogs, put it all aside. Oh, let's go, let's go. Knowing full well that October writes itself. Shields, the tall right hander, six feet three inches tall, into his windup. Now Buster swings a line drive, base hit to left field. And the Giants now with a great opportunity. Bob Blue swings and rakes one down the right field line. That one's into the corner. One hop up against the wall. One to nothing, Giants. And here now is Hunter Pence. You can't be a vocal leader if you're not going to live it out. And, um, you know, that's what Hunter does. He's the most inspiring player I, I've ever had. Ah! He's really a special teammate and a special player. Yes! Yes! I call him the team mascot. You know, there's no other way to say it. He's honestly like having a mascot in the room to get the guy's spirits up as the fans are when the seal's dancing around. Then this guy steps in the batter's box and he's an all-star type player. This guy's a special, special soul. Hunter Pence, wide open stance, waving the bat back and forth, a bundle of energy. The pitch. Pence swings and he drives one into deep center. Kane is going back. He turns, he looks up. It's gone! A two-run homer for Hunter Pence. And now this is a three-run inning. I want to just go as hard as I can, believe as much as I can, play as free as I can. You know, don't let the stage change who you are. Well, what a start for the Giants before Madison Bumgarner throws a pitch. Again, yeah, we give the ball to, uh, to the big guy. We needed somebody uh, to get us off on the right foot and set the tone again. Swing on a broken bat, bouncer back to Bumgarner. He's got it. The second one, the relay back to first by Panic. Two, a double play. The inning is over, just like that. You know, it's hard to really fathom uh, what he's doing because he makes it look so easy. Bumgarner now in a jam. Second and third, nobody out. And the pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out on that high fastball, one out. He was just not going to uh, accept defeat uh, any time he took the mound. And the pitch. And it's down low. Swing! Yes, he did. All standing here at Kaufman Stadium. The pitch to Hosmer. Chops one to pin. And Bumgarner gets out of it. He's got a nice rhythm going. That's bad news for the Royals. The role that Bum was on in that game just really didn't allow him to get back into it. But the Giants have kind of uh, ruined the party for these Kansas City fans who've waited so many years. And the Giants take game one. With losses in games two and three, the series' momentum had shifted in the Royals' favor. The Giants and their resilient fans Play ball! would draw inspiration from their future Hall of Fame manager. I think Boach has a way to model behavior to players that is really important. They pick up how to behave and the demeanor, and Bruce's demeanor is very calm, very collected, very confident. Vogelsong will get the start. The Giants have won every game that he has ever started in postseason play. Four looked, uh, it looked bleak there for a little bit early in the game. And the right-hander throws, and there's a little flare into center field. Coming in to score is Lou Stockness, and it's four to one, and here comes Bruce Bochy. He plays with a hand that's dealt. Some days you don't have a full deck to deal with. Uh, some days you don't get dealt the best hand out of that deck. Come back, win's gonna feel a whole lot better. And he becomes very resourceful to get us in a position to win that game. And the pitch is strike three call, and now in the inning. He looks at the big picture and he has a chess match in his head, and he's working three, four, five innings ahead. Now we need to run, let's go! Duffy line drive, face hit left field. If you are a fan of baseball, you have to appreciate the intuition and I think the mastery that he has at his craft. At second base is Matt Duffy. Mosey, it's a line drive in the left field of base hit. Here comes Duffy. The throw home, not in time. And it's four to two. I don't know how the Giants do it, but they do seem to have a way to get these young players ready for the big moment. The manager does set the tone. And whether the players say it or not, they're, they're sort of uh, sponges. They pick up uh, you know, from somebody now that they know is one of the greatest managers of all time. Here is Petit to try to hold the line. 0-2. Kane swings and misses strike three. The curveball got him. And the Giants are feeling a little bit better about things right now. I mean, there's a sense of urgency you want to win, but there's never any panic. Now, curveball lined into right center field. That's a base hit. It's into the gap. Panic gets a double. Let's go! 
Sacks delivers. Swing of the ground ball toward the middle. Into center field. That's a base hit. Coming in to score is Panic, and it's a one run game. I never feel like we're out of it. Everybody believed in themselves and knowing that they just have to do one little thing, and that might take us over the top. Now Juan Perez about to take the biggest at bat in his life. These guys just had so much grit, so much determination, they just refused to lose. Base is loaded. One out. Here's the pitch. Swing and a fluke. Shallow center. Pence tag it up. The dive and a catch by Dyson. He throws back into second as Pence comes in to score to tie the game. Bases are loaded with two down. He has this special, special skill that he thrives off of the most intense and, and the most difficult circumstances. And I think in a way he's a pitcher's worst nightmare. Everybody else has a game plan, they're scouting reports. What do you scout on Pablo? It's just hard to know how to go after him. It's four to four, the pitch. Swing it up, base hit into center field. He's the ultimate big game player. And the panda comes through again. The bigger the game, the more pressure the game, the better he becomes. I call it drama, postseason drama this year. The one-two pitch, a little bouncer right back to the mound. One hop, Strickland throws to Belt at first for the out. And the Giants have won game four, and this World Series is tied up again. Two games to two games. I'm going to put it to you simply and let you fill in the blank. Describe what Bum just did in the 2014 postseason. History. The great Cy Young once said, pitchers, like poets, are born, not made. For the Giants' 25-year-old ace, Game 5 would present an opportunity to write yet another verse in his World Series legend. Everybody at the big league level competes. You can't get here if you're not an ultra competitor, but this is a guy who lives and breathes to compete against a hitter with a bat in his hand. Here we go, the big fifth game. Come on, delivers. Swing and a miss, he struck him out. Well, those of us who have known Mad Bum knew that something even this historic, you can't predict it, but it's possible. They've got the orange strikeout towels going now. 0-2 pitch. Swing and a miss, he struck it out in a high fastball. And Bumgarner runs the table with three consecutive strikeouts. So it was like watching the best player in Little League. You know, it was like, well, Bum should play shortstop tonight, and then the next night he should play right field, you know? That's just how good he was. Runners at second and third, and one out. No score here in game five. Here it comes. A change up, ground to the second. Pence breaks for the plate, he's gonna score. The Giants have a one to nothing lead. Madison Bumgarner in his fourth World Series start. He's now pitched 29 innings and allowed one run. None tonight. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Curve ball, strike three call. Madison Bumgarner in this big game has gone eight shutout innings. Horrible news out of the Dominican Republic tonight. Oscar Tavares, the Cardinals' great outfield prospect, has been killed in an automobile accident. My head was going crazy at the moment when I heard that news. So, you know, it was really, really, really tough at the moment. And, uh, then I just, you know, I kind of went blank. Giants with a 2-0 lead here in the eighth inning. Two men on, one man out. I'm sure it was tough for Juan to come in. You know, I couldn't imagine losing a, a good friend or a best friend and then having to play a baseball game. I'm not sure how you're able to have focus in a situation like that. Swing and a high drive deep in the center. Kane going way back. It's off the top of the wall. Pablo races around third and heads home. Here comes Pence. Here comes the relay. 
it goes by the catcher. Two runs score, and Juan Perez goes to third. That speaks a lot about him and, and the type of person that he is. What a moment for Juan Perez. Everybody standing at AT&T Park. Five to nothing Giants. Bumgarner delivers. He got a ground ball to third. Pablo picks it up and throws it out. And that's the shutout from Bumgarner. Another masterpiece from the Giants' young ace. That ball, baby, yeah! He's a postseason immortal. World Series god. So two down for the Giants here in the ninth inning. Ten to nothing Royals. 0-2 pitch. Swing the miss. He struck it out. And that sets up a game seven here tomorrow night. You know, tonight was their night. And, and a game seven in the World Series is a gift for everyone. It's, a, it's pretty special. Sleep is uh, tough the night before Game 7 of the World Series. It's a game that you talk about and you dream as a kid and you know all of us want to go out and uh, find a way to win Game 7 and do something well. Before the game I was just trying to treat it like, like any other game. Occasionally when I would think about what was about to happen I'd get some butterflies or something like that. I wouldn't say nervous but just a little anxious. I don't tell we know one that day I just try to Mountain things out there, calm down myself, don't get too excited. I was really happy and relieved that the, the calmness that we had in that clubhouse and the giddiness of guys that were ready to play. Everything's heightened. I think all the senses are heightened. At the same time, you want to try to relax and enjoy it, you know, because you understand that not a lot of people get to participate in Game 7 of the World Series. told the club uh, you know, what an honor and what a privilege it is to manage uh, you know, such a team of warriors and, uh, and uh, go out there and uh, just live in the moment and have fun with it. The season had reached its final day. Game seven of the World Series. Where history is made. Well, you know, prior to the game, um, Bruce pulled me into the office and he said, hey, you know, I, I, I know they probably told you a little bit to be ready, which they had, and he said, but I need you to be ready early, early. Two men on, two to one Giants, and Hudson throw. Infante, in the air to center. Blanco, the catch, the throw. Here comes Gordon, top in. Decision time now for Bruce Bochy, and he's coming out. Jeremy Affeld is going to be brought in. Royals are in a little bit of a roll. They're starting to feel pretty good. They've scored a couple of runs. FL comes in, quiets everything down. Two men on and two men out. It's a 2-2 tie here in the second inning. Swing that's chopped off the plate over the mound out near second. It's gloved by Crawford while he's standing on the bag. And the inning is over. I don't know if he's born for this, but he doesn't get frightened by the spotlight in the moment. When it gets to the postseason, he locks it in and you know, I don't remember the last time he's given up a run in the postseason. I don't know if I've seen him give up a run in the postseason. So Kane with a good lead at first. That fellow have to keep close. Now he's got a guy on and a tough hitter at the plate. And Hosmer crushes this ball. 106 miles an hour off the bat. Kane does not go. The pitch is a bouncy ball up the middle. When he hit it, I was just hoping that he would stop it. Panic dives. He's got a glove hand flip to Crawford. And then it was like... Oh, man, I don't know if he can get him at first. The first, not in time. Oh, I don't know about that play at first. But that was an absolutely spectacular play from Joe Panic. They are going to challenge it indeed. Uh, you're gonna, God's going to let you know what the call is. Got him. Hosmer out by two one hundredths of a second. Man, it was an amazing play. I mean, wow. And, and I truly think that crushed their momentum. And I don't think you could say that it's a stretch to say one of the greatest, if not the greatest, double play ever turned by middle infielders in World Series history. Two-two game, Pablo Sandoval at the plate. 
Sandoval chops one off the plate toward the middle. Farner is right, and Fonte Fairhand slips, throws, not in time. So Pablo, enough speed to beat it out. Here's Pence. The pitch is lined toward center field, sinking, and it's going to get down base hit. And the go-ahead run is at third base for the Giants with one out. When a pitcher has to face Michael Morse, you're taking a, a big chunk out of his energy. You're taking a lot out of him because if you miss one pitch, he can take you deep. He can drive the ball, and those things change ball games. And this is a fly ball situation for Morris. It's a strikeout situation for Herrera. On to the count, the pinch. And Morris lines one into right field. That's a base hit. Coming in to score is Sandoval. And Michael Morris delivers. And the Giants are back ahead, three to two. Oh, I said that. Let's go. Bum comes in, you, you kind of feel, you feel it throughout the stadium, a sense of uh-oh. Last of the fifth here in Kansas City, three to two, the Giants lead, and Madison Bumgarner has entered this game. You know, I wasn't thinking about innings or, or pitch count or how long I was going to go. I was just thinking about getting the guy out that I was facing at that time. Here's the pitch. Struck him out swinging. I remember a quote from one of their players that said, we can handle their other guys. We don't have to see Bum anymore. 0-2. Oh, swung on it, missed, strike three. Absolutely perfect location. He's pitching on two days rest. If we can get three innings out of him, that's going to be great. Turn it over to Romo, Lopez, uh, Casilla down there. We had other arms also. And sure enough, the phone doesn't ring. And we're like, this guy's going to go for it. He ultimately just put us on his back. How much does he have left in him? Swing, yes! We were lifting him up. I think he was lifting us up. It was a special moment to watch. That's four shutout innings, and he has retired the last 12 batters in succession. Under the brightest of lights, legacies are forged. Teams are immortalized. Champions are crowned. Well, if you're a baseball fan, what more do you want than this? It is the bottom of the ninth inning of Game 7 of the World Series and the Giants' ace of aces this postseason. Madison Bumgarner is still in this game. Here's his windup. Here's the pitch. He struck him out! And there's one away. Now the 1-1 pitch. Swing and a high pop-up. Belt comes over. May have room. He's under it. He's got it! And Bumgarner and the Giants are one out away from winning this World Series. Alex Gordon is a very tough hitter, but lefty against lefty with Bumgarner, you're sort of figuring, man, the World Series is over. Two down in the ninth. Bumgarner throws. Swing and a drive to center. Shallow coming on is Blanco. It drops in front of him, and it goes by him. He misplayed it. Gordon to second, heading for third. Still going, and the ball is finally picked up by Perez. And the Royals, who were on death's doorstep, suddenly had the possible tying run at third base. So now you're really on the edge of your seat because now if anything could score a run. And Bumgarner throws. Swing and a miss. It was so intense. It was, it was unlike any other game I had played. High fastball and a swinging strike two. So you're just talking Bum through it. Come on, Bum, make a pitch. Come on, man, Bum. Come on, Bum. Madison Bumgarner tried to wrap up this World Series for the Giants. He's ready. He throws. Swing and a pop-up. Side the ball down the line and foul Brown. He's got plenty of room.
So Buster, is this a dynasty? Um. If you look around the other sports and the teams that have done what we've done, they're called a dynasty, so I don't know why you wouldn't call this one. It's a dynasty for us. That's all that counts. It's a dynasty for our organization, the city, the region. That's what it should be known for. I don't even know what the word means, to be honest with you. So my perspective, we were the best this year. The group was amazing, and it was, it was a wild ride, and I hope that all the fans enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed doing it. Just to know that I've been a part of three world championships, it's amazing, and uh, we want to keep going. You know, there's no doubt about it that this team can be remembered as a dynasty and still is right now. This has been an exclusive presentation from SFG Productions.